Okay, so this is a, uh, a video on how to add uh, UML diagrams to NetBeans. I'm going to go ahead and launch NetBeans. And uh, while that's starting up, I'm going to go online and there's a couple ways you could certainly do this. You could just put NetBeans, UML, okay, or uh, the other way to do it is to just Google search. Easy UML, which is the plugin that we need. Easy UML. Okay. And I'm going to go there. And there's something you need to download, which I'm just going to do right here. I'm just going to hit download to download this. Now, I realize this also says it's for version 8.2 or 8.1, or but I have tested this with version 11, the Apache NetBeans, and it works fine. I've also tested it with versions 8 and 8.0, and it also worked fine. So, anywho, here it is. It has downloaded. It's a zip file. So I'm just going to open that zip file. Don't need the internet anymore. Uh, just put NetBeans down here for a second. So what it's going to give you is um, a bunch of these NBM files. Okay? These are the things that you're going to need to add as plugins, and there's a bunch of them. I know one of them is easy UML, but you actually need to put them all in there. So anyways, what you need to do is uh, unzip these. So I'm just going to make a temporary folder here on my desktop, just a new folder. And I'm going to put all that stuff in there. Now, you, I'm just going to extract it all, but you could certainly just, just pull out the NBM files. Folder, and let's just make sure they're all in there. And yep, sure enough, they're all in there. All those files are in there. Okay, closing everything up. Now what you need to do is from NetBeans, you need to go to Tools and Plugins. Okay. Now this, this is a place where uh, you can now take where it says downloaded up here on the top. There's several tabs. Go to the one downloaded and you're going to click add plugins. Then you're just going to select all those NBM files. You can multi-select by holding down control or shift to select them all. Click open. And I have already done this, but uh, then it would just show you that they're there. And then you would um, click install to install them. But I've already done this, so they're, they're now installed in my system. So now that I have that UML plugin, I'll just show you how to do it with a existing project. So before you go and make a UML diagram, you're going to have to make this as a project, so a new project. And now, UML will show up as an option under the project types, UML Diagrams Project. So next, so I'm going to connect this project in a minute to my IA project or my programming project that I've been building. That's already done. So this could be called UML Diagrams. So it initially starts as an empty project with no diagrams in there. That's fine. You can go and create your own diagrams. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the sample IA that I've built, which you can see I've got one, two, three, four packages. And I've got a whole bunch of classes as well, all incorporated into this. So all I have to do is right click on the main project up here. And here you can see Easy UML Create Class Diagram is now an option for you. So I'm just going to do that. Then I connect it to the UML project that I just set up, the UML for IA project, and click Create Class Diagram. And that's literally it. It then took all of these Java files and built a UML diagram from them. Now, from here, it opens the UML editor system that it's built in here with the plugin. You can hold down control and zoom back a little bit. 
You can take each of these pieces of the UML diagram and move them around if you want to. Because, you know, when it first draws them, it doesn't necessarily lay it out in a way that would be uh, beneficial for you. But I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to move a few things around. You could certainly add to this diagram if you wanted to. Okay. Let's keep moving a few things more around here. Get things in the way that I like them. Okay, that's pretty good. So there you can now see um, each of these in the connections. Actually, I don't want that crossing over. So I'm just going to move this over here. Actually, I'm going to move this over here. There we go. Stagger these things. Almost there. Helpful sometimes when you move them around, it redraws the arrows, which can be helpful there. Okay, there we go. So there, I think, is a better way. You can see each um, class. So, for example, my search class right here, it has all the properties listed here. It has all the methods listed in a UML format. It has the, the lines connecting them, showing the uh, relationships between them, and that's good to go. Now, as far as adding that into your IA, you can right-click on this diagram and you can export it as an image, okay? Um, the current view or the whole diagram. I'm going to export the whole diagram to, say, my desktop. I'll just call it a UML. This could be easily added into a Word document or other kind of write-up that you're doing. So if I had a Word document going and I inserted this as a picture, desktop. there it is. There's that UML diagram all nicely put in there. Now there are certainly other features you could experiment with. There's this range diagram, which is experimental. I have tried this doesn't quite um, look the way you'd expect. Um, you can reduce the number of things it shows. So for example, you can use simple class names. You can um, not show the members. This is a much easier sort of system as well. If you want to create a UML diagram this way, um, you can certainly make it a lot smaller and a lot more compact to the basics of what your diagrams are. Like this, okay. It's a much simpler way to look at it. So here's my link list connected to a node. Link list is connected to sort and connected to search and connected to the file handler, connected to numbers, and dialogues is connected to these two. Actually, I'll move back that way. Okay, and then my user interface is connected to, to those. So this might be another way to look at this. Um, and again, there's a few more things. You can change a little bit of the color scheme. It's not, it's not exactly uh, Photoshop or anything like that, but it does give you those few options that you can do, okay? Um, okay, so I'm gonna export this one. And this time, I'm just gonna export the current view. Just click away first. And once again, this is UML2, and I'm going to insert that one after this one. And there you go, okay? So, of course, like anything, if you need to crop this and stuff like that, you can do that. Um, so that's a quick and easy way to do a UML diagram. If you need other features, like for your IA, like, for example, if you don't like that sort of grayish background. There are certainly things you can do with pictures. Um, you can, for example, with the coloring effects, you 
can set transparent colors on there like that. So it's it's a nicer look there. I can certainly help you with any of that stuff, but that might be a quick and easy way to put a UML diagram into your IA. Now there's one other thing I want to show real brief. Um, that was me creating a UML diagram from an existing project. But believe it or not, and I know this won't apply to those of you doing uh, internal assessments, you can create a brand new UML diagram. And for here, I could create a class diagram. Okay. And now I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to take a class and drop it on the diagram. Let's say I called this person, okay, the person class. I could add a property, like their name, okay? So here you're building it this way, okay? A name, and then over here, the properties window, I can say what type it is. So maybe I want to make that a string object. I want it to be public, okay? Do I want it to be static or final? I can, I can apply those, so there it is. So let's say I add another property. Let's say it's age. This one maybe I want to um, make this one a private property called age. Okay. The type, an integer. Okay. So there you can see I can essentially create it. I can do the same with methods. So I'll make a talk method. The talk method, as you can see here, returns nothing. It's a public method. I'm going to do another one. Let's make this a think method. The think method does return something. Let's say it returns a double for no particular reason. And it's a protected method. Okay. So here you can see it's setting that up. You still have the same options. You can not show those little icons if you want. You can just have it more look like a traditional UML. Okay. So now I'm going to add another class to this project. Could also be an interface. And enums, which we didn't really cover. I'm not a big fan of enums, but I'm going to add a student. It's going to have a student number. Okay. The student number is going to be an integer. It's going to be public, etc. Okay. Now, if I wanted to show inheritance between these two, I can use the is arrow here. Okay. So I drag it on. It's an is relationship. The source is student. The target is person. And I click OK. So a student is a person right there. Okay. So it's automatically connected those two classes. I can move it around. It's still showing connection. Let's say I add another class. This time it's um, a ball. Or how about uh, a pen? Let's try that again. Pen. Okay, and it has a color property, and it has a draw method, just for example. Now, what I want to do here is I want to have the student have a, a pen, so I can use the has relationship. I can also use the implements. Again, UML diagrams get more complicated than we, um, we went in in class, or even the use. So I'm going to use use. So... The source is the student. The target is the pen. So a student uses a pen right there. These little 1.1s, uh, again, are not something we went into in our discussion on UML diagrams, but it's just something that you can explore with further uh, study. So there is three classes connected. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to have an interface. This interface will be a permission form. Okay, and I'm not going to bother with properties right now or methods. Uh, maybe I will add a method that you sign the permission form. What is that one? I don't want that one. Where did I get this? Delete method. There we go. And I'm going to do an implements. So it's the student that implements the permission form, okay? So remember, this means it'll follow the rules of the permission form. So the student is implementing this interface. It has a relationship to this class. 
and it is a person. So the student class is connected to all the other three classes. Now why I did this is because now the cool thing you can do is you can right click on that brand new diagram you created and you can use easy UML to generate code. Now actually before I do this though I'm just going to set up the project for it. I'm going to set up a Java project it's called the UML experiment. It's obviously going to add a, a main class to it because I, I told it to do that. But uh, there it is. So it's just got one Java file, the UML experiment. Okay, but now I'm going to go back to that UML diagram I created, generate the code, tell it to go into the UML experiment, and click generate code. Now this is not a perfect feature, but what it does do, and you can see right here, is it creates the class called pen. See, there's the object. Here's the interface called permission form. Here's the person class, and you can see here, a string name, an int age, public and private, the talk method, the think method, and then my student class. You can see here that it extends person, implements permission form. It does not show the connection between student and pen. Um, so I'm going to actually try that one more time. I'm just going to delete all these files. I don't know why. And I'm going to go back to here. And in student, I'm going to say that it has a pen object. And that pen object. Uh, is of type pen. So it's a pen pen. Uh, and I'll make it public. Okay, and let's just try that again. So generate the code, put it in the UML experiment. It by default puts it in the default package, but you could certainly move that. And let's take a look at person. Oops. Student. There it is. There's the connection. The student has a pen right there. Pen, pen. Okay. Um, now, there's still things to do, right? Like you can see here, we have to implement all the abstract methods of that interface. Okay. The person class. Um, oh, that was interesting. I'm not sure why that made that private, but fix that. And that should uh, essentially um, allow you to build Java code, at least the starting of Java code, from the diagram as well. Okay. And uh, that concludes my little demo on using UML with NetBeans.